Greetings from Emadi News and Hatke Foundation of India. Welcome to our show, Chat with Dr. KK. Today we are going to have a chat with Professor Dr. M. Khalilullah, who is a recipient of Padma Shri and Padma Bhushan both from the Government of India, who has been a Director, Professor and Head of Department of Cardiology at GV Panth Hospital. And now he runs his own, uh, uh, he is a Director and Senior Consultant Cardiologist at the Heart Center. Uh, cardiology is incomplete. Any journal, national or international, any conference in cardiology is incomplete without presence of Dr. Khalilullah. Welcome to our show. Thank you, KK. In 1975, I joined my medical college. When I was right in my medical college, my first exposure with you was when the conference was in Nagpur. Right. And at that time, one of our cardiologists, we lost him while he was attending the conference. And at that time, I saw your charisma. I came back to Delhi. And in fact, let me confess, you were one of my role models. I watched you closely getting Padma Shri, getting closely Padma Bhushan. And, and you were one of my uh, role models at that particular moment. And I saw you not only in the field of cardiology as a whole, but specifically in the field of electrophysiology. I mean, I can say you are the pioneer in introducing that in the field. Just give me the history of electrophysiology in the country. Uh, you know, KK, the uh, area of electrocardiology and arrhythmia was my passion right from the days I was a student in Nagpur Medical College doing my MD in medicine. I was given a topic uh, of presentation uh, by Professor Jane Berry, who is the professor and head of medicine in Nakua Medical College on cardiac arrhythmias. I went through two large volumes of uh, books by Karts and Pick, in which the genesis and the diagnosis of cardiac arrhythmias was discussed. And we used to have a kind of a weekly get together of friends on a bunch of uh, uh, oranges and, and groundnut to see hundreds of ECGs together. There's a passion to learn electrocardiology. And when I was there, we used to have sometimes very fierce discussion amongst ourselves whether this is a VT or SVT. And uh, because the treatment of the two conditions was entirely different. So we were feeling very helpless because we didn't have any approach to get into the heart that time because uh, there was nothing available that time. So what I did was I developed a small device with my own uh, funny ideas in my mind. I took a rice tube, put a wire through that, took it out and put the other end inside the rice tube again and marked it E25, E35 and E45, put through the mouth into the esophagus and record the potentials of the left atrium and the left ventricle from inside very close to the heart. That is esophageal ECG. So one could differentiate between a VT and SVT. If you got a PVA before the QRS complex is wide, it's SVT. If there is AV dissociation, it's a VT. So why, why, why can't, why it disappeared? Why, why it did not become like an established practice? Yeah, I'm telling you. So when I did that, uh, I approved some of my classmates uh, that they were wrong and I was correct, you know. That, and the, and the, uh, Pleasure order was so enormous. So I came to uh, Ames from uh, Nagpur in uh, 1966. I joined the institute as a DM student. And the same thing happened to a case which was diagnosed as VT there. And uh, in the night I was posted. A young man who has no heart disease, coming with a wide QRS tachycardia, unlikely to be VT, you know. So I put the rice tube inside, got the record done. It was a PV before coming each QRS complex. So next morning, when the chief came on the round, he said, I know the case of VT. I said, I beg your pardon, sir. It's not a VT, it's a SVT. I said, what makes you say that? I showed the record. And he was amazed how a boy from Nagpur came all the way to Ames and completely changed the diagnosis. And finally, when I was treating him, I was giving IV dejoxin, which would kill a patient with VT and terminate SVT. So that was the passion to learn electrocardiology, you know. But once we had done with let, that... Let me go back. Mm. In a rice soup, which wire you put? Oh, it was a, a ordinary wire, you know. The electrical wire. Electrical wire, because you only have to pick up the signals from the uh, from the esophagus, which is, a trip is just... just no, when the, the wire is esophagus. inside the, the rice tube, how will you pick up the signals? Because it is in touch with the esophagus, you know. 
Okay. The, yes. the, the rice tube will be in touch with the, the rice tube will be in touch with it. And the wire is on the surface of the so okay. on the surface tube. you just yes, slide it down. No, I I put it inside, took it out again, put it inside. So only a centimeter was outside. Okay. And the other end was connected to the V electrode. Okay. So pick up the issue okay. with the lead. That's, that's understood. You know that side it, you know. So I was thinking as to what more has to be done. Dr. Melvin Scheinman came from California. He was visiting Delhi for an uh, a day stay and round in the G.B. Panth Hospital, where Dr. Padmavi, the director, and I was, uh, I think, assistant professor in cardiology. So I was supposed to meet him and conduct him to the hospital. He had brought a patch cord through which one could do uh, his, his bundle recording. His bundle is a potential between the atrium and the ventricle and uh, shows the difference between the supra, uh, uh, supra his, infra his or the, the block is above the his bundle or below the his bundle. Absolutely. And that makes between benign and malignant block. So he had come with a pass cord. So I thought I'll open it up. So I opened that up and I found that there were three, three prongs. Uh, the two wires had to be put on the, on the two, two ends and a ground electrode. When I opened, I found both the wires were soldered to only one pole. I realized this is wrong. So you won't believe I went to Chandni Chowk. I bought the same toggle, again the same kind of three pole wire, and I wired it correctly. By the time I developed my own pacemaker, so I knew how to go about soldering and all. So I bid three prongs, the two ends of the, of the three core wire on the two ends, and one ground electrode. So when we came in the cath lab, Dr. Melvin Scheinman, I asked him, would like to see this pass cord? He opened up and said, my God, we can't do it because this is wrongly wired. I said, no, sir, I've got a rightly wired wire with you. So we opened, we, we did the first his bundle, 7th of March 1975. There were you joined medical college. Absolutely. And the first case was done by him, the second case I did. That's how the electrophysiology started in India. And then we started doing a complete heart block, sinusoidal dysfunction, differentiating between supraventricular tachycardia and ventricular tachycardia. And all this went on for several years, you know. The EP started all over, people uh, used to come and training for GB Panth Hospital. Then in 1984, I had gone to the United States on three, two and a half months visiting professorship. When I see, I saw three centers where the EP work was done and they were ablating the AV node for supernatural tachycardia. I came back in 84 June, I did the first ablation. Using improvised system, we use a DC shock to put inside the, on a, on a catheter between the his bundle, between the tricuspid valve, near the tricuspid valve, just near the his bundle, and give a shock 200 joules, AV node is abolished, re, de reentry into the AV node is completely gone. So that was the first ablation in 1984. That was started, that started the treatment of uh, heart diseases by intervention technique. First intervention, I must say, was this. Then we did ablation of uh, several patients with old Parkinson White syndrome, avenal brain tear, tachycardia, etc. That went on for several years. Then after that, I started doing surgery of the old Parkinson White syndrome. So we did do open heart surgery. On the surface of the heart, we used to map it out by handle electrode. One of the reference electrodes, the second electrode used to go on the surface of the heart, we used to mark out the timing and find out the earliest point of activation in the ventricle. And there we used to give incision and ablate the accessory pathway and reentry is abolished. In this, we had great uh, help and assistance from uh, Lawrence German from uh, uh, Duke University Medical Center, North Carolina. Then we had Bennett, uh, Graham Bennett from, uh, from London. Then we had Dr. Penn who came from uh, Holland. So we had visiting uh, faculty who helped us establish cardiac surgery. Arrhythmia surgery for the first time in the whole of Asia, in fact. And that went on till we discovered that RF ablation is possible now. So RF ablator was available. It's the same thing like a diathermic 50 cycle thing, but it's specially designed to ensure that the heart is not damaged. And that came into, into the picture. And that took, completely took over the marriage of cardiac arrhythmia. Today, I'm very happy to see that so many centers all over the country. The, that was the only center in the country where the EP and RF was done. Several people came for training to the center and keeping the same keeping the same thing in mind. I designed an arrhythmia center there, the only hospital which had this arrhythmia center in GB Panth Hospital. And then now I see at least 25, 30 centers all over the country where the EP is being done regularly. 
and some of the young generation done so well, so well, I feel proud of each one of them and it makes our country proud. So that we have now method of correcting cardiac arrhythmias, some very, very potentially lethal arrhythmias leading to sudden cardiac death. We could also now diagnose between the benign and malignant heart blocks. We can diagnose patients who have sinus node dysfunction and patients who are potential to go into sudden cardiac arrest well before time and give them therapy which can save their life. And the advantage of uh, this kind of treatment is RF ablation is in about 95 to 97 percent this is complete cure. It's complete cure for life. No drug is required. The patient breaks to normal, normal activity, normal life unlike recurrence in many other conditions. So from, from history let's come back to academic. Let's just enumerate the conditions where a family physician or a physician should refer it to a electrophysiologist. A, a, a P person. The one is you said is a patient with blocks. Yes. So which patient with blocks should be referred? I tell you, any patient who comes with syncopal attack. Syncopal. So one is syncope. Needs an evaluation. It needs an evaluation. You see the sinus node function. You see the AV node conduction time. You know the AH and HV interval. And patients who have wide QRS complex like LBB. So all patients with LBB. Here I just want to add one thing is yes. that I have created a small. Uh, to tell my GPs right. that RBB is R means our, BB right. means BV means wife. <laughs> so if RBB is with us, you can ignore it. But if your BB is L means left, if your BV is left, don't ignore it. But if there is an RBB with left entry hemi block. Yes, RBB and BV is with the That's right. <laughs> so if you have LAH with RBB, he is the case to study further. Absolutely. If you have LPH with RBB, he is again a case to see. If the RBB is a long PR interval, he is a suspicious zone. You should find out what is the so one is, like. one is syncope, second is a QRS duration which is more. Which is more. Third. And patients who come with bradycardia. So lower heart rate, lower irrespective heart rate. of the cause. Irrespective of the cause, all these patients you must study. Uh, today, a lot of people are talking about inappropriate sinus tachycardia. Right, a, right. As long as evabradine has come. Uh, is this entity common? That's right. It's common. It's very common in younger age group, especially in the adolescents, you know, who are exposed to a whole lot of uh, stress uh, stress, and they have to compete with in life. They, this this happens and uh, this is this sometimes caused by sinoatrial reentry. It's a relatively unknown condition, but if you can if you can diagnose, it can be permanently corrected also. Mostly these things are, this is done by uh, multiple cups of tea and coffee to be taken a day and use of tobacco and some of these stuff like pan bar and so on with these boys they're exposed to and uh, they, they, they they sometimes they, they, they like to overdo they you know they they're working uh, 14 hours a day 16 hours a day sedentary life sitting in the computer for a long time so all these things they they get cumulated now, for ablation the indications are like yes, like narrow QRS tachycardia, narrow QRS tachycardia, wide QRS tachycardia, wide QRS tachycardia, VTs, VTs, VPCs, which are not controllable by ordinary drug therapy. What about uh, atrial fibrillation? Uh, now uh, atrial fibrillation also being ablated very successfully. Uh, all this a complex technique to going to the transeptally into the pulmonary vein and ablate the pulmonary vein, ostium the pulmonary vein is now being done, especially in the prevent of stroke. A stroke is becoming a very common condition now in elderly age group who go to a new epidemic society. In fact, I think as the age advancing and our lifespan of the people in our country is increasing, this is the new front is opening up now. So atrial fibrillation with stroke is a deadly combination. This is a common precursor of a stroke is atrial fibrillation. Now what about in pacemakers? I'm, I'm not talking about routine pacemaker. What about the indications of ICD and right. the CRT? You know, patients who come with end-stage heart disease with uh, congestive heart failure not amenable to correction by the optimum medical therapy, they can now be benefited by by v pacing, three lead pacing from right atrium, right ventricle, and the coronary sinus going to the left ventricle. It does wonders to the patient, wonders to the patient, and many patients who had been otherwise patients to go into for heart transplant can now be salvaged. And uh, the longevity, of course, increases, but the quality of life improves remarkably. So, by we pacing has improved the functioning, uh, the, the functional class of the patient with end-stage heart disease in a remarkable manner, and has become the treatment of choice in patients who are who are you know, have an intractable heart failure in spite of optimal uh, medical therapy. 
then patients who have ischemic heart disease with uh, VPCs and runs of VTs, non cessna sustained VTs, and those who have syncopal attacks should also be considered for, for uh, IACD implantation. ICD implantation. I'm very happy to know that the ICD is now giving a warranty for seven, eight years, so it becomes uh, not only easy for people to go on with, but also becomes economically viable. People who have poor LV function and have a problem of arrhythmia, you can give IC, you can do by uh, pacing, a CRTD. So you do by pacing along with the EICD so combination. Like combo device. Combo device, which is life saving in many patients. Away from academics. Mm -hmm. What are your hobbies? Hobbies are gardening. 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 Gardening is my great hobby. I have about 2,000 pots in my house. 2,000 pots? 2,000 pots in my house. They are all full of seasonals, roses, rare plants, magnolia and what not, you know. That's my hobby. I have uh, I have nurtured it from, for a long time. In fact, I inherited it from my mother, you know. So if you would not have been a doctor, what you would have become? Oh, I, I would have been in... Uh, a trade in gardening? Uh, oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing trade in, gar trade in gardening, but I would have loved nature. Loved nature? Yeah, loved nature. Certainly, certainly, yes. If the Prime Minister of India calls you and makes you a health minister for a day, what policy change you will bring? Oh, I think several things on the card, you know. I wish that is possible. One is to stop tobacco cultivation. Ban tobacco altogether. That's one. Completely. Abolish BD industry. Cigarettes are also being banned now, slowly. That is one single cause which is causing maximum damage to human life. You know. The second thing is to think in terms of uh, planning the healthcare delivery of this country. Say, as a director of a hospital, I used to plan out and extrapolate the requirement of my hospital in terms of electricity, water supply, manpower, linen, you know, etc., etc. The country needs planning of that kind. With the aging population, you need to how many doctors you need now. So you, so you are happy that at least the government has banned uh, Gutka in the I'm many I'm very states. happy. It should be permanently banned, you know. So it's tobacco in all forms. And I think we need more doctors, you know. If we had opportunities, I don't think our, our, our children would go on to other countries to get train, train, training, you know, which I don't think satisfactory. They would have been trained in our own country, and our country is fantastic. In 76 years of my life, I have loved this country. I have uh, taught children of all uh, uh, levels, MBBS, MD, DM. I must have trained at least 300 DMs, examined 500,000 DMs. But it's very satisfying to work in your own country and make it rich and be proud of it. For prevention of sudden cardiac death, uh, now public is being taught hands-on CPR. Yes. Previously it was difficult because mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation was there. Right. Now right. that has been taken out. Now they say within 10 minutes of death, earlier the better. At least for the next 10 minutes, compress the center of the chest with a speed of 10 into 10, that is 100 per minute. Right. What are your views on it as far as public teaching is concerned? I think that should be done. In addition to that, I think in all public places, like airport, railway stations. The defibrillator should be available. Should be there. Should be there. That could save many lives. And many lives would I, I, I have an incident of my own brother who had gone suddenly sick in Nagpur and was declared dead in fact. I had gone there, he slowly made recovery. I transported him to Delhi and he's a, he's a live man. So timely uh, help to a patient who has sudden cardiac death can have glorious results. Glorious results. It needs magic. It needs magic touch of a quick, a quick, and uh, uh, supportive team. You know. So I think that is what is indicated, and you'll save many lives, many lives. So what Dr. Khalilullah feels is that if he is made the health minister for a day, he'll make sure that tobacco is banned from the country altogether. We wish all the luck to him, and see. Hopefully, our politicians are listening to him. Let's thank our. Uh, our guest, Dr. Khalilullah, for Thank being you. with us. Thank you. That's all for today. We'll come back with one more show. Till that, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.